Hello everyone, my name's Lost and welcome back to Let's Game Maker. In this episode we're going to add some collisions with the walls and we're going to fix some bugs and add some health points so enemies can actually die um, which will set us up nicely for the next episode where we're going to add monsters to the dungeon generation. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up player, go into the create event and we're going to create a few variables. Firstly, we're going to say can move equals true. Um, this is is going to stop us from moving while we're being knocked back so we can't do that thing where you know you get you get knocked back you're moving at the same time then it acts all weird we're going to fix that bug um, we're also going to say anti stick x for now will equal zero and anti stick y which will equal zero as well so these are going to be used to get to stop us from being stuck to the walls um, you know like um, if a zombie is pushing us into a wall um, and they're also in attacking us as well. This is going to stop us from sticking. And we're also going to add HP equals 10. But we're not going to do anything with the HP yet. I'm just adding that so um, we can follow on to it shortly. So the second thing we're going to want to do is we're going to go into the step event. And there's a few changes in here. Um, firstly, if you see where we have spitter, we're going to change that to room on all of them. Um, and we're going to add a spitter... Um, collision to the bottom. So um, we need to add up here. Um, we're only going to be able to move, remember, if um, we're not being knocked back. So we're going to say if can move is true, uh, let's spell it right. If can move is true, then we're going to be able to do this. Um, just like that. And the way that I move the code like that is I just press tab. Um, so, and the first thing we need to do is we need to add can move equals false here. Um, now that's going to stop us obviously from moving when we get bounced. Um, now we're going to go just be just beneath that, and we're going to now work on our anti-stick function. So we're going to say if place meeting um, x and y object spitter to start with, um, and make sure you add your end bracket, then we're going to say x equals anti stick x and y is equal to anti stick y. And then we're going to say else if place um, meeting x and y with object room, then exactly the same, we're just going to say x equals anti stick x and y is anti stick y. So beneath that we're going to write else and we say anti stick x equals x and anti stick y equals um, y. The reason we're doing that um, in that order is because you know we, we could use um, previous x um, oh no it's not that, sorry it's, we could use x previous and y previous but the problem with that is um, this adds every frame of the game, right? So this is doing it anyway. Um, and what will happen is, if you're inside the wall or you get stuck inside the wall, that will still happen, and so it won't. It it can't get you out because you, your coordinates are in the wall. You see. Um, whereas this particular one only writes the coordinates when you're not colliding um, with these two. So to get unstuck, it's quite easy because it'll just move you out of it um, using these. Um, so the next thing we're going to do, we're going to stop a situation where the zombie can push us into the wall and prevent us from getting out. So we're going to say, and it will also add like a little attack anima animation for the zombie as well. So we're going to say, if nearest enemy, um, and then we'll say direction um, equals point direction. In fact, we're just going to copy this here. We'll just copy that in there, and instead of nearest enemy, we're going to say object player, and again. So what will happen is the zombie, instead of just chasing us, and as soon as it taps us, we go flying, and then it just carries on. It'll just knock back very slightly, is what we're going to aim for there. Um, and we'll say, we'll make it bounce equal to one, and we'll set a shorter alarm, or alarm, sorry, of maybe ten. 
Now, that should sort that one out. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the alarm, alarm one, and in here we're just going to set can move equals to true. So that's your player character now all set up. Now we're going to do um, a similar thing for the zombie. And in the create event, we are going to say anti stick x is zero, anti stick, um, if I can spell, is also zero, and we'll give it some HP as well. So HP could be 10. Um, now, if we go into the step event, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this alarm away here, and instead we're going to put it um, up here after bounce. Um, we're just going to do that because obviously we're calling another alarm in the player object for the zombie object, and if it's down here then it's going to call our alarm and also this one, so we'll just put that up here to avoid that. Um, and now let's set up our um, collisions with the room and things like that. So we're going to go after bounce and we're going to say if um, place meeting xy object room, then this will be our anti stick. The is exactly the same as we did in the um, player script or object, sorry. And y equals anti stick y, and we'll do the same um, for the spitter. Uh, so object spitter and x will equal anti stick x, and y will equal anti stick y. So yeah, that'll just stop it from. Um, getting stuck in random objects, well, well, not random objects, but those two objects, and then else, anti-stick x is x, and anti-stick y is y. Um, and now, we're going to do the health, so that we can actually make um, things die. Um, so we'll start with the player just for some consistency. We've already created the health variable and in the step event we're going to say when we collide or when a zombie collides with us we're going to say HP minus equals 1. And we're also going to say when we get hit with um, the spit then also HP minus equals 1. And down here at the very bottom of all of this I'm just going to create a death event and I'm going to say if um, H, H, HP is less than 1, so that means it can only be 0, then instance destroy. Now, that's just going to kill us. Obviously, the, our objects will be destroyed. Um, let's do the same thing for the zombie. Um, so, we already set the HP for the zombie as well, and we'll say um, if it gets hit by a tier, then HP minus equal to 1. And at the bottom, we'll also do the death event. So if HP is less than one, instance destroy. Um, now we only need to do one more for the spitter, and then we'll see how everything works. So in the spitter object, create HP equals um, maybe five for the spitter, um, and in the step event, we'll say when it. Um, gets hit by the tier, then HP minus equal 1. And the same code at the bottom um, if, I mean, I, pr I probably should have copied this now that I think about it, but that's okay. If HP is less than 1, then instance destroy. So let's give that a little test. Let's just make sure. First, we'll test the collisions to make sure that it's all working as intended. So we have, we, good, we have a zombie in there. So let's just make sure that we can't get stuck to the walls. Right, so he's knocking us back, he's bouncing back a little bit as well, sitting, hitting us against the wall, we're not getting stuck. Um, let's see if he gets stuck against the wall. Oh no, we've killed him. <laughs> Alright, so I was hoping to check if we'd get him stuck. Let's just, um, let's reload that to make sure he doesn't get stuck. Um, let's see, let's see if we can just position him next to the wall. Like, 
Yeah, there you go. He's not getting stuck. He was bouncing off there. That's good enough for me. Um, now we need to make sure that the... Um, do you know, like, the spit and the tears? We need to make sure that they destroy when they hit the walls. Because currently they're just flying through the dungeon. And that was the bug. If you remember when we had the, um, the third upgrade where you attack your, your tears to go straight to the enemy... Um, the reason they were all coming from the sides is because the bullets that were off screen were, were then getting the power up and coming back um, towards the zombie or the spitter or whatever. So we're going to go into object here and in the step event we're going to say if place meeting um, X and Y with object room then instance destroy. And then copy that code, and we're going to put that in spit as well. And it needs a step event now, so add the step event, and there we go. So let's just demonstrate that to make sure it's working the way that we want. Uh, let's just kill the zombie first. There we go. So, yeah, there we go. They're now being destroyed as they're touching. There is still a problem, though. There's still an issue, and. Um, if the zombie kills us, the game will crash because he's still going. I'll, I'll demonstrate and I'll show you why. Um, so the reason it's going to crash is because if you remember the MP step event, um, once it's killed us, it's going to start to look for us and be like, "Whoa, why is the player not here? I don't know what to do. I'm going to crash." Um, so let him kill me, and then we will see. There we go. So we've crashed because he's killed us. And now it's saying that he basically cannot find the player. So it's saying, what the hell's the player? It's not here anymore. So, in the zombie, we're going to go to the step event and we're going to say, um, if can attack equals true and instance exists um, object player, then it, then it will do it. So, we also need to do the same for the power up three actually which I will show you in a second so let's just make sure we don't crash anymore uh, yep right there we go so we don't crash anymore um, we're just dead and obviously the zombie now doesn't do anything so I'm going to demonstrate the, the final crash that we've currently got in the game and that is with the third upgrade once you've killed the zombie so let's just test that so we should die pretty quick, there we go, and now we've crashed because again the tears are now trying to find the enemy and they can't. And the same is going to be for the spitters spit. So let's go to the object here, in the step event we're going to say if lock on is true, instance exists par enemy. So that's now fixed and we just need to do the exact same thing for the spit. Um, in here we'll say Oh, not in this. In the create event, sorry, you want this one. So we're going to say um, if, in fact, we can do it here. We'll say if instance exists object player, um, then this can happen. So let's just make sure we don't have a situation anymore where, you know, the game crashes. Um, so let's go into stage one and we'll add the spitter and we'll just put in there I know just to make sure I don't get stuck putting that so let's make sure we don't crash anymore oh what have I done there in the create event in spit okay let's have a look and ah uh, yes as normal I've missed the bracket right so now let's test it so let's kill the zombie we know he doesn't crash anymore and they're all going to go towards him and unfortunately we've just killed him but as you can see um, now we've still got the upgrade but it doesn't follow anything anymore it just fights straight forwards um, so yeah that's pretty much all the bug fixes we, we can't um, collide with the walls anymore like we can't, I mean we can but we can't go through them is what I'm trying to say and yeah we don't really have any crashes now in the game and I know that this episode was a little bit of a boring one um, but it was necessary to put us into a 
situation where we can start generating mobs throughout the dungeon um, without any bugs. So yeah, that pretty much wraps us up. So thank you very much for watching, guys, and I will see you next time.